Hi, this is Jackie with Panama Relocation Tours and welcome to our Saturday live stream. Today you're in for a special treat because I'll be interviewing Randy Rogers who moved to Panama in 2019. But before we get started, just a few announcements to make. First of all, thank you so much for being here. If you're new to our channel, we appreciate you being here and please subscribe so you can get updates about our next live stream and new videos that we add. And if you're coming back uh, for our regular set, I see many, many names in our uh, chat window that come every single Saturday. And thank you so much for being here every Saturday. We really appreciate it. So for those of you that are new, my name is Jackie, the owner of Panama Relocation Tours. And in 2010, I started a company uh, that offers tours uh, to people that are considering relocating to Panama. We go all the way across the country over the six days and educate you about all the important things that you need to know to move to Panama to avoid expensive mistakes. Uh, we introduce you to immigration attorneys and um, give you information about health insurance and getting your pets here and finding a rental and buying a car and all the things that you need to know. Um, so we started that in 2010. Right now we're doing tour number 234. So we've done a lot of tours uh, since 2010. We also have something called our online Panama relocation guide, which is like a home study course for those people that really aren't tour kind of people. Uh, and you'd like to do some exploring and investigating on your own and do it on your time frame. So you can get more information about the online guide if you go to our website, PanamaRelocationTours.com. And on the top where it says online guide, just click on that for more details. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring on Randy. Hi, Randy. Hi, everybody. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Randy. Thank you so much for being here. So um, I already told everybody that you moved to Panama in 2019, but just uh, can you give a little bit of background about where did you move from and uh, why, did, why were you kind of considering that Panama might be the best place to move to? Well, I, I moved from a small town in Tennessee. It's Nashville, Northeast, uh, uh, Portland, Tennessee. And uh, I, uh, I wanted to retire as soon as that I, as soon as I could, and uh, living on Social Security and retiring early at, at age 62, 63, uh, you know, your, your draw is very low. It's reduced. But I, I had always heard growing up my entire life that uh, uh, living in a third world country, you can live like a king for uh, a very few dollars. So that, that got me interested in, in living uh living abroad or living in panama or i went to several different countries to decide where i wanted to retire to mm -hmm. so you came on a panama relocation tour in 2019 and that sealed the deal for panama is that right well yeah yeah i mean i i had looked at several other countries uh, philippines i went to Tha uh, to thailand they're just too far away to you know when, when I have three daughters and three granddaughters, and you don't want to be too far away. I mean, from here to Miami is three and a half hours. A couple hours more, I can be in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, and, and so, you know, living far away in the Philippines or, or, or Thailand, you, and they don't, they don't use the U.S. dollar here, it's very easy. It's very attractive mm -hmm. to come here because it's, yeah. it's, it's dollar for dollar. There's no exchange rate going on to speak of. And uh, uh, quite frankly, uh, uh, the people are so welcoming and the Panama relocation tour was so informative. It would, it would, be, it, it would have been nonsense for me not to move, uh, not, not to try it. And so I, I, my tour, I think, was like October 19th or something like that. And uh, I came over for the, the week span, and then I stayed another week, and I'd already planned on on moving back from, uh, uh, or, or going flying back to get another few uh, suitcases full. So I moved here with five suitcases, two two round, uh, uh, two plane tickets, and uh, in the course of about a three week span. Yeah, 
So yeah, you pulled the trigger fast uh, after you saw Panama. That's great. And I know peop a lot of people may have seen your videos. You've done two videos for us. One, when you lived in Boqueche during the middle of the pandemic, um, uh, when we were on lockdown, and then another one after you moved later. So what made you decide to move to the Boqueche area when you first moved here? Well, I, I, I found a place uh, right behind, uh, 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 well, across from Big Daddy's. I think it was behind uh, Panama uh, Panama Solutions, I think it is. It's a real solution. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, uh, I found a place for $300 a month, utilities furnished and utilities paid. Of course, it you know, the price was unbelievable. And this is back in 2019. Price is unbelievable. So I used to joke about, you know, I get up in the morning, you know, I can flush the toilet, start the coffee, check to see what's in the refrigerator and not get out of bed. <laughs> it was a very, very small place. It, it was much like a motel room with a hot plate. But, yeah. uh, but it, still, it, it allowed me to, to go there to get my feet wet. Uh, I did a, uh, uh, I think it was a, yeah, it was a six month lease to start. And being downtown was a was a huge orientation to uh, to to the Panamanian culture. I mean, right. if the dog has puppies, they're going to shoot fireworks and they're going to party for twenty four hours. And yep. uh, just any any excuse to celebrate, they love to celebrate, and and that's that's what makes it such a joy. It's so life fulfilling being here, and. Uh, uh, Walking down the street when I when I first started, walking down the street, you know, it's like you could tell in in, in the pedestrian's eyes that oh no, another gringo, and <laughs> and so I made it a point to speak to every Panamanian that had that you know that harsh look away, you know, I I, I would say Buenos Dias or Buenos Tardes, just you know, I was and everything changes when you do that. When you make eye contact and you say Buenos Dias or Buenos Noches, then they get a great big smile. But for the gringo that looks away, um, you know, there's there's <laughs> exactly exactly. It's it's like you don't mesh into to their culture. So by using just those little greeting courtesies, the next thing I know, I'm walking on the other side of the street and I'm hearing Buenos Noches, Randy. <laughs> you know, a brand of me is, and, and so, you know, it's it's like acceptance. You know, you you come into the culture, and it's a very friendly culture, and uh, you know, they first look that you know, it's like oh, but when you when you make the attempt to be nice, to be mm -hmm. uh, to show some courtesy, some simple courtesy. I mean, let's face it, I've got a I got a southern accent, and saying. Buenos Dias, you know, it, 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 it's laughable and, and they laugh with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they laugh with you. So, mm -hmm. so you're right that um, there's many advantages to living in downtown Boquete or downtown Chitre or downtown Panama City, anywhere downtown, because you can just walk to everything. You can walk to the grocery store and restaurants and you don't really need a vehicle. So you can walk to everything. But it's quite a bit more noisy uh, from just the road traffic and, you know, the fireworks because the dog had puppies or, <laughs> or, or, you know, maybe someone got an A on their test at school. So they're going to have a parade down Main Street for a celebration for something like that. So, I mean, you know, there's pros and cons. And that's something that everybody has to decide um, and maybe just give it a short lease like you did three, six months and give a downtown area test drive before you sign a long-term lease. But, so you did the right thing by signing a shorter lease uh, whenever you first moved here, which is one of the things we teach during Panama relocation tours. Yeah. That, and that, that was a, 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 some great advice for me. It's like I, I've lived in four or five different uh, locations in just Boquete. Mm -hmm. And uh, my good, the last place that I was living, it was, uh, it was up by close to Las Narvenas and uh, by Hotel Central. And uh, the, 
there's a vacant lot coming off the mountain. So be beautiful view, but at six or six thirty in the morning, you know, the cold breeze coming off that mountain is, mm -hmm. uh, is quite chilling and, uh, it's hard to get warm, but, uh, uh, I, Bo Ketty is a wonderful experience and I enjoyed it. And then it seemed like inflation just, I watched the rents double, you know, that, that same little studio apartment that I had went from 300 a month to 450. Yeah. I and mean, li literally it's just, you know, it's a living room. Well, and, you know, and part of that is because there's new uh, people, gringos, new gringos coming to town and they'll just slap any price out there. And if somebody's willing to pay it, then okay, that's the right rent now. But if it doesn't rent after a month, then they'll lower it back down again. So the inflation has happened because new people are coming in that don't know what the right price is. So they'll pay those higher prices. You know, just today, I don't hardly ever go out to eat in Bocache, but I, it was raining and a little bit chilly. And I thought, boy, this is spaghetti weather. So I went to a restaurant in Bocache and I just had some spaghetti, no meatballs or anything, and a La Cuadra de Pino, which is a pineapple smoothie made with water. It was $17 uh, oh, for wow. that. Yeah, that's just, a, it's not the right price. And just, um, I can't remember the last time I went to that place, probably like 2018, it would have been $7 you know, for that same meal. So because new people have come to town in Boquete, it's caused the restaurants to raise their prices up and up and up. The rents aren't that much more. Um, the wages they're paying the people that work there, that there aren't that much more. The food prices at the grocery store haven't really changed enough to justify some of those bigger prices, but definitely the prices have gone up. And you noticed that also that I think in one of your videos, you said when the hamburger went to $12, you knew it was time to start looking for another place to live. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it uh, you know, Bocchetti is a great, you know, orientation to Panama, but the, the, I guess really the handicap that I have now is that I began in Bocchetti and there you know, there's an English conversation on every corner. Mm -hmm. So Spanish was not required. You, you just didn't need it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you could you could go to a store and if the, the attendant didn't know English, they would they would take the time to listen to you with your 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 uh, translator. So uh, but now that I'm in David, it's a whole different ball game. It's, it's like, mm -hmm. I have to use Spanish. I, you know, I'm forced to use it. I'm practicing it every day. I'm getting better at it. You know, it, it, if, if someone that speaks Spanish is with me, I'll say something and they'll look to them to confirm what I said. Mm -hmm. But when I'm by myself, uh, you know, and, and I'll say it, they'll say, Oh yes, they'll understand it because my, my, my accent just doesn't work. Good You're good. Spanish. They're good. And, you know, that's um, a lot of people are moving um, and we encourage people don't rush into buying any real estate, just rent. And perhaps the whole time you live here, just be a renter because it gives you the flexibility that you can live in Bocate for a while and go try out David for a while. Maybe you want to try out Chitre for a while. Um, also, if you don't ship down a 40 foot container full of stuff that you have to move every time you go. But if you come down with, you know, four or five suitcases, it'll fit in the back of your car and you can go try out a different place. So that makes it a lot easier. Like the restaurant I went to for spaghetti today, they had the menu on one side was in Spanish and flip it over the other side. It was in English. So you go to David and it's going to be Spanish or Spanish. Um, it's not very likely that you're going to, you know, maybe TGI Fridays is the only place that you might, they might have a menu that's going to be in English and Spanish. But if you go to a place where it's not overrun with expats, uh, like Boquete is, then there's the prices are going to be considerably less. So moving to David, I know in one of your videos you talked about it, but moving to David, have you noticed that the prices at restaurants and grocery stores and rents and everything else are significantly less? Absolutely. Uh, a perfect case example, uh, 
the little boxes of orange juice, you know, it's maybe, uh, maybe a, I guess maybe a pint. Uh, it's a dollar thirty-five cents when I left Boquete. I don't know what it is now. It's a dollar thirty-five cents at at uh, Romero's or or or, or Baru, but uh, down here it's a dollar and a dime. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just twenty cents, and that's not going to make or break any of us. But it all adds up because it's a consumable. The uh, the the rents here. I'm in a three bedroom house now, uh, two bath, four hundred and twenty five dollars a month. That would begin at nine hundred, up to fifteen hundred a month in Bocchetti. So, uh, being here, you know, it's warmer in the beach, you know, but when we have an overcast day like today, it. it 85 degrees was the the high. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, every night it drops into the 70s here in David, and uh, so it's it's not as horrendous as driving from Bocchetti in your air conditioned car, and you come down and you get out of your car at uh, at uh, uh, Price Mart, and you're it's all paved. So you've got the the pavement is radiating heat. You open your door and you get this sweltering. Oh my God, it's so hot. You know, it's, I couldn't live here. It would kill me. Well, I've been here for one year and just re-upped another year's lease here. Uh, it, it hadn't killed me yet. So, uh, you know, <laughs> spend some time in other locations, become acclimated to that particular area. There's a huge, uh, I guess, Dolega is growing with expat population. Algorobos is 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 growing as well with the expat population, uh, simply because Bocchetti's, you know, they're pricing themselves out of the market. And so it's it's so much more affordable. So, um, you know, that's an important thing. Like whenever I go down to David, I feel like I'm going to die because if yeah. I go to Bart or Chelmsford or Shopping Center, but you know, I'm coming out and it's all pavement and the heat's just radiating off of that concrete and it just feels hot. But if you drive through the residential areas where there's trees and, um, and things like that, it feels probably 20 degrees cooler going through a residential area than it does going to price Mart, which is like a Costco for people. So you have to get into the neighborhoods and you'll feel, you can roll the windows down and you'll feel a significantly uh, different temperature and the rents are just so much more. You get a lot more for your money. Um, Absolutely. As, it's 50% cheaper. Uh, for no, rent. At, at, at least 50%. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I, you know, uh, the, the thing, the thing that I, yeah, this, this is the tropics. I mean, we're, we're, we're basically cleared away a rainforest to live here. So you, you gotta go to where the trees are, where the vegetation is, <clears throat> And that is Mother's Nature's air conditioning, and right. and and so you can go to a riverbank. You there, there's many places that that you can seek uh, uh, comfort mm-hmm. here in the V and not have the gouging prices that they have up, up north of here in Bocchetti. But Bocchetti is a wonderful place. I don't want to put Bocchetti down or any resident that lives there. It just that- it got it got out of my budget, you know. Yeah. It, it, and living on social security is is difficult in Bocchetti for 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 what I draw. Down here, I'm living like a king. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Bocchetti, like you said, it's an easy place to make that transition because English is spoken in so many different places. There's so many other expats around. Um, menus are in English and Spanish. The doctors speak English. The bankers speak English. Um, you know, many of the real estate agents speak English. So it does make it for an easy transition and a good place to start for a lot of people. And then once you get settled in and get a little bit more comfortable, then you can spread your wings and look out in some other places just like you did. Right. I found one doctor here that didn't speak English. Uh, I saw that most, I mean, somebody that's got a medical degree, generally, They've taken the time to learn English, right? You know, so uh, English here, as far as healthcare goes, has not been a problem. Mm-hmm. 
So um, if you had to do all over again, if you were moving to Panama right now, if you were having it to do all over again, would you still have started in Boquete or would you have, uh, you know, with the rental prices, maybe not, but if you had it to do all over again, would you have picked a different area for your first place? Well, doing, you know, doing it all over again, uh, well, I would certainly have studied Spanish a lot harder than I ever had before mm -hmm. coming. If I was going to like just come in and let's say jump into David or Dolega or, or Algorobos. But, um, but coming here and being in Mochetti, you know, I, I, I did, I said earlier that I felt like that I was handicapped because I didn't, I wasn't forced to speak Spanish. So right. then my Spanish ne never gained any ground at all being in Bocchetti. And, and so uh, coming down here and it's uh, my vocabulary is expanded. Ex e even though I'm studying every day, I, uh, today I think it was an 800 day streak in Duolingo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I uh, pat myself on the back, but uh, uh, doing it all over again, I would have brought less of my stuff you know, because I, five suitcases for a single man, yeah, that, that's ridiculous. But in those suitcases, I have my wetsuit, my uh, my BC pack, my mask, fin, snorkel for scuba diving. I also had uh, uh, an Instapot. I had, I had some copper pots and pans, some knives, forks, plates. So, you know, I... I for, for a single man to bring five suitcases, I, yeah, I shipped a container down here almost. <laughs> but all that stuff was here. And it's all I, didn't need, I didn't need to bring that. Yeah. So, it, it, but it's not like I'm maintaining two residences. What I wish I'd done is I'd sold it there instead of dragging it down here. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. 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 Just the other day, my instant pot died and I went to, uh, Nove, I think it went Nove or Do It Center and bought another one. Uh, yeah. They sell instant pots here. They have a Cuisinart pots and pans. They have really nice knives. They have a really good sheets and towels and all those things are all available here. Now, you know, when I moved here in 2010, they didn't have as big of a selection. So a lot of people say, oh, well, they say bring all your stuff. But now it's all readily available. So what about... Um, um activities and you know fun and entertainment are you finding that available in david i know you're into pickleball do they do pickleball in david yes i started a pickleball group here uh three or four about four months ago maybe uh the lions club la basita gymnasium which is a state-of-the-art gymnasium and it, it's i think it seats I want to say is, it seems like it would hold 20,000, but I think somebody said it was 2,000. But regardless of that, they have hydraulic uh, rows of, of seats that come out from the wall so they can expand their capacity to court side. So the so regulation uh, basketball court, and it's used for volleyball, basketball, and now pickleball. And mm -hmm. uh, that's that's growing uh, uh you know, every every month we get one or two new members right, that, that join in the fun, and that's my main activity. Uh, I like to go to uh, Parque Cervantes, and they uh, they have some of the biggest iguanas, and they're they're fairly tame. And we'll we'll get a head of cabbage and go go down to the park and feed the iguanas, and they'll crawl across your lap. It's pretty fun, interesting. Uh, just shopping here is is uh, quite amazing. Uh, I I have three daughters, of course, and and uh, I walked first time I walked into El Campeon's. I, I came in and I'm looking at these prices, and my eyes are like, "What?" So I turn around and go back, turn a video camera on, and walk back through and send it to my daughters, and and, and it was it was it was panties, all right, for girls. And they were 50 cents. They were on sale for 50 cents. And I'm like, you know, you can't buy that. You can't find anything like that in the United States. And 
So right. um, my activities outside of shopping, uh, stopping by the uh, the fruit stand, seeing Manuel, uh, things of that nature, just occupy my time. I play pickleball three times a week. We'll go. We'll go to La Bruqueta to hang out at the beach on a weekend, or Las Lojas, and or we'll go to uh, to the river and mm -hmm. hang our feet in the river. Yeah. You're it, probably it, only about 30 minutes to Las Olas or La Barqueta, 30, 40. It, it's, a, it's about 15 from La, uh, La Riviera is on the, on the out street, the new street mm -hmm. that they put in. It's on, mm -hmm. the, on the outside of, uh, of uh, David, uh, the four lane. And so I'm on that side of it. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's 20, 15, 15 to 20 minutes there. So you're 15, 20 minutes to the beach. You enjoy your pickleball. You're close to some really great hospitals, both public hospitals and private hospitals. Um, there's tons of shopping that's available in the downtown area, the Federal Mall, the City Mall, um, Price Mart, all those things are 10 minutes away or less probably from your house. Right, about, yeah, about 10 minutes. I, you know, it's, it's really neat here. Uh, the Fondas, walk, just walking into a Fonda, to explain to the to, to everybody looking that, that are not having came to Panama yet, a fonda is a it, it, it's a house that they supplement their income because the mo mother of the house is a good cook, and so they'll have two or three tables set up, maybe outside, maybe inside, and uh, you can go have a, a lunch, a meet and three for uh, three seventy five, including your drink, including a beverage. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Fondas are, are a real neat experience. Uh, I, I, I saw on Instagram hamburgers two dollars and seventy five cents on Tuesdays. I'm like, yeah. you, you know, it, it, it makes me just laugh at Bocchetti, uh because Bocchetti it's got it's got the weather. It's got it's all that's great down here. It's if you're walking. Out of the direct sunlight, it's not bad here at all. I like it. I love it. Mm -hmm. So um, you have a Panamanian girlfriend, and uh, does she take you out for some Latin music and dancing once in a while? What um, She's probably uh, gotten you involved in some entertainment you would never have tried on your own. Oh, uh, my with gosh. <laughs> yes, let, let me tell you. <laughs> the... Uh, uh, we went to Oku last weekend. There was a, a baseball game going, and her family, and understand her family's house, all right, it's like their family's property, and, and there's two or three houses on their property that's built right next to this baseball diamond, this baseball park. And uh, so we did not tell them we were coming, all right? We just sort of did a surprise, and uh, here we come, and oh my goodness, it wasn't long. They sent somebody to go get food, and they started cooking, and the baseball game's going on, and, and music's playing, and, and it was just an incredible experience to see how close-knit that the Panamanian families are just, I mean, they're so thick. It, it's like it's not like America where, you know, you're too busy going to work to take to raise your child. You got to have somebody else in daycare to take to raise your child because you've got to work. And so here it's no, no, we work is secondary. Family's mm -hmm. first. And, yeah. and and that's I think that's what makes uh, uh, Panama and the Panamanians uh, great as they are. Yeah, they're definitely very family oriented. And, you know, sometimes people get frustrated, especially on a Sunday when we're doing a tour. We have a very hard time finding anybody to show a rental property on a Sunday because Sunday is family day. Um, you just, you know, that's, you know, showing just because a bunch of people want to see some rentals and might want to buy a house from you on a Sunday. That's not important. What's important is spending time with your family on a Sunday. So, um, it's just a different culture that you have to get used to that things are not going to happen in your time. It's going to happen in their time. 
Right, right. That, that's I admire the Panamanians for that uh, for that tidbit. I mean, they just I, I I met I met my girlfriend's mom. She's she's uh, uh, she's alone, and uh, but I mean, she's she's just a great woman. I met her mm-hmm. brothers, her sisters, you know, uh, the in laws, the 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 kids that I mean that there's probably 25 people there yeah. <laughs> and, and that's that's immediate family <laughs> yeah that, that is so I've got a lot of people in the audience that are just dying to ask you some questions is it okay if I open it up for some questions for you absolutely please do so, yeah if anybody has a question for Randy if you would please type it into the chat window but put three question marks in front of it so I can quickly and easily identify it as a question. I'll pop it up on the screen. So three question marks. So someone asked earlier, um, this one, I'd like to know how un, unhappy Randy hmm, receives from social security. I don't think that that's phrased right. I get 1830. Um, so is your social security like less than 1830 or yeah. about yeah. yeah no it's less yeah and you're doing just fine in david absolutely i'm doing just fine in david uh, you know if i had if i had 1800 a month in social security i probably would be in bocati right now but mm-hmm. <laughs> but then again after after experiencing david and and making the friends that i've made here I, yeah, I, I'm not going back to Bocati. I, I may go to like Agarolos or, 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 or Delega, but I have no desire to live in, 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 in Bocati because every meal would give me heartburn because the check would be too, you know, it's just like you going for spaghetti, me going for a spaghetti hamburger. Double drink, $17. It was insane. I, I know. Yeah. So uh, Stephanie wants to know, did you ever consider Volcan? I'm sure you we went there during the tour. Have you visited Volcan since then? Uh, yes, I, I, I've been to Volcan, Volcan many times. I played pickleball in Volcan. Uh, uh, gosh, the, uh, the Black Mountain Coffee uh, uh, restaurant has some amazing filet mignon. And uh, if I ever go to Volcan, I try to I try to have lunch there and and, and get the uh, filet mignon. Um, I haven't considered living there. I felt like the uh, uh, the the shopping, the infrastructure needs needs to grow a little bit more. You know, a few more restaurants need to be built, a few more shopping centers. It needs to grow a little bit more before I would be attracted to it. You know, because living in Mokanti, to get anything, you really have to go to David. There's a yeah. lot. There's a lot there, but you come down here. I mean, my goodness. Uh, I, you come down here. You've, you've got access to everything. Automotive parts. Yeah. Everything uh, you need is right there in David. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so Robin wants to know if you purchased a car after you moved to Panama. Yes, I I I I have purchased two cars and a motorcycle since I've been here in four years. The first, uh, the first thing that I purchased was a, a, a moped, a Honda Elite. And excuse me if I called it a motorcycle. I didn't mean to ins- in- insult any Harley riders out there that might be li- listening. But no, it's a little moped, uh, a Honda Elite. And uh, it did pretty good. You know, it, it, it solo, it was fine. You know, you take somebody with you climbing the mountains, you know, going up Paramelo or, or Peru was struggling a little bit with two people but you know it, it, it's a great way to sightsee but yet at the same time you take your eyes off the road here on a motorcycle uh, or even a bicycle you're mm-hmm. risking your life because i mean because you you look at you look at the view and then next thing you know you got a pothole that, that takes you out yeah. so so that it's it's a little dangerous on two wheels and uh rainy season is long and you can pretty much predict when it's going to rain and and beat the rain but you're going to get wet if you're on two wheels so i i bought my first car and 
uh, I eventually, I kept it about a year and then I sold it and bought another car. And now I have a, uh, a 2018 Volkswagen Gull that is uh, uh, a four door hatchback. It's not an SUV, but you, you know, it'll hold a lot of stuff. It's comfortable. Right. So yes, having a car is, is, you know, it's not necessary if you're patient, if you're, you're, if you're patient for a bus or you're patient for a taxi, um, you know, I don't, I don't think I save any money owning a car here, but let's face it. Insurance is really, really cheap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I pay 400 a year for full coverage. Yeah. I, I just got my uh, renewal on my insurance for my 2020 Hyundai Santa Fe and with full coverage, comprehensive, five hundred forty dollars a year. So, uh, car insurance, super. It'd be three times more, maybe four right. times more in Texas. But yeah, it's super affordable here. Uh, so, BD says, how long you have you been there? So, you moved to Panama in two thousand nineteen, uh, and when did you move to David? I moved to David a, a, a year and. Uh, a year and three months ago. Okay. One, yeah, one, one year, three months. Lynn wants to know if you feel that David is a safe place for a single lady. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, the, you know, if, if you're a single lady and you want to live in David, uh, you know, by all means, take your diamond rings off, keep your jewelry to a minimum. Don't, don't, don't create a target uh, uh you know it, it's like you know don't come pulling up in your bentley or you know or your jaguar and uh get out that, with your diamond that necklace applies, that applies to everywhere in panama not just David. exactly yeah even in Boquete or panama city uh don't flaunt your wealth um yeah just keep you know, yeah it's exactly i mean you know, you can make yourself a target anywhere in the world. Just come here with common sense and be, mm-hmm. uh, 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 you know, just be reserved. Be yourself. Be friendly. And 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 try not to, you know, have a pocket full of money that you're flashing, you know. And mm-hmm. Yeah, it's safe. You know, it's like you're a single woman uh, at 9 o'clock at night. Are you going to go to the bar, you know, to go dancing? I, you shouldn't do that anywhere, you know, unless you know where you're going. Uh, can you go to the casino? Yeah, there's security for parking. Everything's lit. The cameras are on. Yeah, you can go out. But, uh, uh, you know, that being safe as a single woman is absolutely. Yeah. Just, um, just, so, don't, just don't be silly. <laughs> yeah, don't be silly. So um, how about... Um, uh, Michael wants to know how the electricity infrastructure uh, like for air conditioning because it's so warm. You have, I think they have less power outages in David than any place else. Well, okay. To answer that question, uh, in, in Bocchetti, <laughs> it's like how many times did the power go out a week? All right. And that's, and that's still current to this day. It's, it's like, how many times does your power go off per week in Bocchetti, which is several times. Here in, in David, I have found the power might go off uh, a couple of times a month. So, uh, and, and it's out only for, a, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes. We had a huge tree fall in uh, La Riviera, Quantas La Riviera is where I used to live. Huge tree fell, took out internet, took out electricity, took out, uh, 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 yeah, internet. Yeah. That's, and they had it back on in about two hours. That's the longest power outage that I've ever experienced in the last year. And you brought up a good point that the tree took it out because in most of Panama, not all of it, but the majority of Panama, the electric lines, the internet lines, and things are above the ground, not below the ground. 
So if a tree falls on it, then it can go down. And that's why uh, sometimes they have what they call planned power outages, where they're going to turn the electricity off on a certain street and they're going to come in and with uh, chainsaws and they're going to trim the trees so that if there is, it's a windy day or lots of rain, there's less chance that it's going to fall on the electric and the internet lines and you'll lose power. So they do that on a regular basis to help try to minimize it. So um, here I'm for, where I moved to, which is just a couple of kilometers away, but my electric and internet, I'm, I'm on fiber here. And uh, uh, the uh, it's all underground, except mm -hmm. it's, it's, got, it's got the power on the pole, but from the pole to the house is all underground. Which is is pretty neat. It's like a, I feel like I've, I've moved moved into a first world country now, <laughs> which which uh, Panama has a lot of firsts. But you certainly feel like with the potholes up north uh, in Bocchetti and Bocancina Road, with and the power outages because I mean you're right in the middle of the mountains with with all the trees, all the vegetation. Mm -hmm. Power outages are are our daily experience in Bocchetti a lot of times. Uh, now the cost for air conditioning here, um, I, my largest bill, uh, and I get the Hubilado Disquanta Hubilado, which is a twenty five percent discount on my electricity bill, up right. to six hundred and fifty kilowatt hours, and uh, and I had never went over. Uh, uh, the most usage I ever had was 423 kilowatt hours, which equated to after the discount $39.73 for the entire mm -hmm. month. And uh, so and that's running air conditioner uh, every day, every night. Not mm -hmm. all day. I'll, I'll sit here and let the, let the heat build and long about 2 to 3.30, depending on if it's overcast day or not. I turn my air conditioner on. I'm going to turn it on. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a tough guy, but I ain't that tough. <laughs> <laughs> well, then why? You know, when your electric bill is so affordable, be comfortable. Be comfortable. Exactly. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, I, I, my, my mother, gosh, uh, my mother uh, raised me. You know, they recycled everything, you know. I mean, you took the, the half-gallon milk cartons turned into freezer food, you know, that would fill full with a freezer stuff to go in the freezer, you know, it, everything was recycled growing up. My mom was just very frugal. And, and so I don't want to waste anything. I don't want that $40 electric bill is if I can keep it at 39.73, I will. Yeah, there you go. Um, so somebody wants to know, and you may not know the answer to this, but a three bedroom, two bath house in Dolega or Volcan, you think that's available for under 800? Certainly, uh, yes. if you say you're paying for your three bedroom, two bath in David, what? 425. 425. So, yeah, in Dolega and Volcan, um, I would say you should be able to get a three bedroom, two bath for no more than 700. No, um, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Don't pay That's the gringo price. And uh, question from Larry, Jackie. If one has money in a Panama bank and a high interest saving to the counter CD, is that considered income and is it taxable in Panama? So interest, um, the interest that you earn on your savings account in Panama is not taxed. Uh, Panama encourages people to save money so they don't tax you on the interest that you earn. However, if you're a U.S. citizen, that's considered income. And you have to pay taxes on the interest that you earn on your foreign bank account in Panama. It's a crazy rule, but it is the rule. Well, now, isn't there an exemption for the first uh, 100000 or something income that you earn here offshore? No. No? Okay. Uh, there is an exception on the if it's earned income, like working in a job, then it is. But passive income, like interest from a savings account, that's considered passive income. There's no exemption for that. Thank you. Okay. And let's see. Um, here's another question about safety. Do you feel safe in David? 
Um, how's crime in that area? I feel very safe uh, anywhere in Panama. Uh, gosh, you know, Davids a city, so you can you can expect uh, you can expect a little bit of crime every now and then. Uh, I think since I've been here, uh, there's been one murder, you know, one shooting. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, you know, it's, it's, I mean, right downtown David, you know, there's, uh, you, you could literally get out of your car and walk down the street, leave your windows down and not worry. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 crime here is, is calm simply because the jails here, you don't want to be in a jail here. Not that I can, not that I can testify to or or share an experience of being in a jail here, but I have heard. <laughs> I I don't I don't want to go to jail here, I uh, because of what I've heard, and I have heard that if you get put in jail, somebody that you know on the outside needs to bring you a blanket and a pillow because you're not going to get one in jail, and if you're going to want any. A decent meal. Somebody needs to bring that to you because you're not going to get a decent meal in jail in Panama. So, right. so that is deterred uh, crime here. It's not like you get three three square meals and air conditioning and cable TV like you do in in North America. Down here, you go to jail, you're going to hate it, and then when yeah. you get out of jail, you're not going to want to go back. That's that's. That's my take so, on it. Uh, so in one of the lessons is that is don't get involved with drugs because that seems to be the number one thing that, you know, don't be buying and selling drugs because that seems to get people into jail uh, more than anything else here in Panama. So someone asked if you would give a breakdown of what you're, you're living in, David, and they ask if you would give a breakdown of your cost of living. So what, 425 for rent. And Four, yeah, four twenty-five for rent, forty dollars for uh, 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 electricity, forty dollars for cell phone and uh, my fiber internet coming in. Uh, water is paid by the landlord. Uh, let's see, eighty-four dollars a year for garbage service. That's per year. So you break that down to about six dollars, I think, per month. Uh, our grocery bill, well, my girlfriend has a 16-year-old son that I, he's got a hollow leg or something. I mean, this guy, when he eats, he eats everything. He's a growing young man, and I don't mind spending the extra money. But uh, uh, buying groceries, and, and she has a, a daughter who's in college right now. She's in Chitri uh, at her dad's place. When we go to the grocery store, it, it's almost... 100 per week is what we spend on groceries and we eat very well we get what we want uh you know i today i went and and, and bought uh about uh, fish and uh filet mignon and i got three pounds of filet mignon for 20 bucks mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean that's that's a huge well not a huge steak. filet mignon is not huge but it, it, they were nice and thick um, so yeah, about a hundred for that, uh, entertainment, gosh, uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm turning 67 at the end of the, at the end of the month. Uh, I don't go out, you know, we'll, we'll go out to dinner, uh, as a family, we'll go out to dinner maybe once a week. And that's generally about a $50 bill for the five of us to go out and, uh, uh, so my car insurance is three, four hundred dollars a year. My gasoline is about fifty dollars a month. You know, that little Volkswagen gold doesn't use much gas. I just run across town, don't go, don't go far. Don't, don't use a tank of gas a month, maybe. Mm -hmm. I'd have to look, I'd have to I'd have to research my credit card statements. Um you know, and Movie theater is, is it's like three dollars and fifty cents for a ticket. And I get a Hublot discount; it gets even cheaper. So, uh, uh, you know, yeah, but, you 
You get 50% off at the, I haven't been to the new movie theater at Federal Mall, but I've heard it's really nice, but you get 50% off uh, movie theaters when uh, yeah. you have your visa. So does your house have hot water? I know uh, some houses don't. Um, no, uh, the, no, it, 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 it did not, but I paid for it to put in. Cost cost me a hundred and twenty dollars for a, a, a electric water heater in the shower alone. You're, it, it's hard to find hot water in the V, but at the same time, you shower in and uh, in, in, in early evening or late afternoon. Your your water's going to be okay. Yeah. It's not it's yeah. not going to it's not going to make you go. No, your water's going to be okay. It'll but showering early, it comes out lukewarm. Yes, it does. Yeah. And then, but you take showering early in the morning. It is it, it's a chilly. I can't stand it. I, I I'm like no. So I was in my other place that didn't have hot water, and I was in there for a week. And I go, oh no, I'm. I, and the landlord paid half. You know, he he paid half, and the hot water stayed in my other place. I come here. And I mean, I, here I can see myself staying here three, four years. I, I already asked the land, the land landlord, if uh, you know, if I renew in a year, are you going to have any reason to go up, or are you going to stay the same? She said, I'd renew with you at, at, at four twenty-five every year for the next five years. And I go, mm -hmm. wow, yeah. excellent. So I'm, I, I don't have any reason to, to go anywhere else. So in David, uh, what would you think is the minimum budget for someone to live um, the lifestyle that you have um, in David? Well, wow. Uh, when I was living single, when I was living single, you know, my, my grocery $50 a week. So it's doubled once we get more mouths at the table. Um, gosh, uh, I live very comfortably with, with within my social security budget. Now I do collect uh, uh, rent on my home in the United States and that comes in, but I generally uh, gain money per, per month where my savings account goes up and then I go to the United States to visit my grandkids. So um, would you say, I, um, you know, I would say 1200 to 1500 to 1500 for one person. If you're coming with a spouse, then, you know, depending on your, your lifestyle, depending on, you know, 2000 at the most, you live good at 1500 to 2000 here mm -hmm. versus Bocchetti. Bocchetti's, Gosh, you'll you'll you can spend two thousand a month there on rent, but uh, uh, but in David, yeah, a, a comfortable budget fifteen hundred for two people. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be frugal, yeah. So, um, how do you like the local beaches, and how would you say they compare to the beaches in the Azuera or the Coronado area? Well, you know. Um, the the this in Coronado the beaches there are, are, are like a dark sand a volcanic sand which is black uh, so it's like you get mud all over you all the time and I don't think in Coronado the riptides are as bad as they are here in Los Olas of course mm -hmm. being a scuba diver and being a, a you know a, a, a trained lifeguard I know how to handle a riptide and and you know they'll they'll sweep you out. They sweep me out. I haven't I haven't been caught in one because I can I can read them. I can see them. Mm -hmm. um, but you know if you go out on a riptide, you, you know you just got to arc out of it. You swim with it and out of it. Once you get out of it, then you work your way back to the to shore. But the beaches here are nice. They're clean. Uh, the the sand is is a lighter color. You know it, it's it's not a dark brown like they are in Coronado. Uh, uh, so here, you know, I feel cleaner in the oceans here than I do in Coronado. Right. Um, plus, it's less crowded. The beaches are less crowded. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I go to the beach and they're like, 
So what's going on? When did you take this photo? During the pandemic? I go, no, no. It's, it's one other person like 300 yards away. <laughs> it's like, no, no, this is a day at the beach. Yeah. 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 It's just uh, the way it is. So yeah. what about like television, you know, to watch football games or things like that? Do you have an Amazon Fire Stick or do you have, watch it with cable TV? How do you uh, get your TV shows? I, I I haven't missed uh I haven't missed a playoff game for the uh football season. Uh I use a fire stick and I use a VPN to bring in when when the playoff games are on local networks, uh I can go straight into that local network and, and stream it in especially I mean, I just got the fiber since I moved here. I just moved here last week. And mm -hmm. uh the fiber is amazing. I, every now and then I'd get a little buffing at the other place because they didn't have fiber. Over here, I have uh, 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 the fiber network and there's no buffing. It's just perfect. You know, it's just like watching cable TV right. in the United States. Yeah. Uh, if you live in, and, you know, and David has good infrastructure for water, for electricity, uh, for internet, you know, fiber optic, you can get. 500 megs or even more um, uh, for internet speed if you want to. So when you live in a bigger town like that, then you do have, sometimes you have a little bit better infrastructure. Now that's not to say that the electricity might go out once in a while, that the water, municipal water might not flow once in a while. But if you have a reserved water tank, you'll never even notice, notice that the municipal water is not coming in. Um, right. And here, and in, in, in some of the newer neighborhoods, uh, they generally have their own water tank. Okay. Uh, all right. Now, La, La Riviera, where I moved from, they had their own water tank. We never had a water outage, but we never had good water pressure. And I found out that that was the plumbing from the water meter through to the house. That was the problem because there was a spigot outside. Mm -hmm. that, that would, you know, blow the dirt away. I mean, you turn that spigot on, and I mean, the faucet would like arch up, like, whoo. <laughs> There's plenty yeah. of wa water pressure. It was just uh, bad plumbing to the house beyond, beyond that. Uh, but the V does have some water issues in other neighborhoods. The older neighborhoods, you'll see the water tanks uh, right. at the houses with, right. with, the, with the pumps to maintain the pressure. Uh, here, we, we have at, at, at this particular spot, there's two huge water tanks and uh, so there, there's no issue here. Mm -hmm. So uh, someone wants to know, what's what's the temperatures like in David? What's the weather like? Highs I, and lows? 90, 90 during the day, every now and then it'll creep up 92, 94. You can have a feels like temperature of 100 when the humidity mixes in, but when you're in the dry season, the humidity really drops down. And so when it's 90, it feels like 90. And overnight lows are in the 70s, uh, uh, 71, 72. I, lo I love waking up in the morning uh, with the birds singing and go open the door and everything's fresh, you know, and the sun's yeah. up, the birds are singing. And, uh, if you're fortunate, the dogs are not singing. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of uh, green parrots uh, when, I, when I, I'm in the residential areas in David. There just seems to be thousands and thousands of green parrots that are roosting um, in the trees there. Yeah, and they are one fussy bird. They, oh my gosh, the green parrot. I mean, it's it's fun to watch them move from a tree to another tree. And uh, but they make a, a bunch of racket doing it. They do and it. So it, it, it's it, it's fun to watch them. It's fun to watch. Yeah. Them. When I lived at my house on Volcancito, I had uh, probably two hundred green parrots that lived in a tree right outside my bedroom window. And about nine ten o'clock every morning, they would all say, "Hey, we're going to go over to the other side of the yard. We'll be back this afternoon." So they all made a bunch of noise. And then yeah. about two o'clock, they all came back. They said, we're back. Uh, but they had to make the announcement that they were leaving and when they were coming back. But, uh, you know, in the residential areas, I see a lot of green parrots. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. Yeah, here the and there's there's quite a few, quite a few uh, uh, black crows in the wintertime mm -hmm. down here, and uh, they're quite intelligent. Yeah, black crow quite intelligent. You can you can you can, you can put a a morsel of, of fruit or a seed up under a bucket, and they'll figure out how to get, how to get, how to get that bucket over and mm -hmm. they get that seed. <laughs> So, uh, Randy, uh, we've, we've already been talking for a whole hour. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. So do you have any advice for someone that's thinking about moving to Panama or they're, maybe they've already decided to move to Panama and they're getting their paperwork in order, but they haven't moved here yet? What advice do you have for someone that is considering a move to Panama? Uh, well, I, th the advice that I would give to, to, to the listeners, to anyone planning on making a move would be plain and simple. Check your politics at the border. Come in here with an open mind. Uh, be courteous, be kind. And that's what you're gonna receive here. That's what you'll get back here. You, yeah. You'll get courtesies back. You'll, you'll get what, what, what you project on others will come back in, in the same fashion. And so that, that's my advice to anyone wanting to come to another country to live. Yeah. You know, a smile and just a simple hola goes a long way. You're absolutely right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So pe people still have a lot of questions. And um, if you could just uh, send an email to, with any of your questions that you have, and I'll be glad to answer them. So send an email to info at panamarelocationtours.com. Neither I'll answer them or if necessary, I can forward them to Randy. Uh, but Randy, I want to thank you so much for taking an hour of your time to uh, be on this live stream and share the things that you've learned after living in Panama for more than four years and living in Boquete and now living in David and the comparison between the two. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it. Had a blast. Uh Thank you for for giving me the necessary education to make the transition, uh, yeah. and and of course my advice I have to say is is at least get the guide so that you don't make stupid mistakes because if you don't know how to do it right you're not going to do it right you're going to make yeah. mistakes get the guide mm -hmm. or do the tour the tour is fantastic I, my gosh I, we ate great drank great and. Every night was a wonderful experience with, with like-minded people that are doing the same thing that you're entertaining to do. So, yeah, do the tour. Yeah. Thank you, Randy. Have a great weekend. Thank you for everybody that was on the call. By the way, 369 people on your live stream. Ah, that's yeah. great. Fantastic. Yeah, and, so thank you to everybody. Me. <laughs> that was on the live stream and I'll see you next Saturday for another one. Have a great weekend, Randy. You too, Jackie. See ya. All right. Bye now. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good weekend. If you have any other questions, just send an email to info at PanamaRelocationTours.com and I'll be glad to answer it there.